Ahoy aspiring sea wolves, this is Commander Tyrael, your trusted guide in the world of digital conflict. Today we're deep diving into the heart of War Thunder's naval gun and ammunition types, so buckle up because it's going to be a thrilling ride. Let's start with the basics. In War Thunder, naval weaponry is as diverse as the vessels themselves. From light machine guns, auto-loading auto-cannons, light naval cannons, and all the way up to massive battleship artillery, with guns big enough for a man to crawl through. Each of these have their own unique characteristics and uses. Alongside the gun type, there are six main shells that can be used. High explosives and three sub-variants of high explosive, with the HEVT, HETF, and high explosive base fuse. Then you have semi-armor piercing and armor piercing rounds. Standard high explosive has a nose fuse that detonates on contact with anything, causing damage on contact. High explosive does a lot of damage to wooden and unprotected vessels, and it's useful for destroying warship superstructures, AA mounts, torpedo bays, rangefinders, and unprotected turrets. They can also start deck fires which can travel deep into the ship. More TNT is always best when deciding which shell to use. High explosive time fuse shells have a time based fuse set based on the rangefinder setting at the time the fire order is given. They detonate after a predetermined distance and can be somewhat effective against aircraft. These become obsolete when your ship has the next variant. HEVT has a radio fuse which detonates when it detects an aircraft within its radius possibly the most powerful AA tool outside of missiles. This fuse was responsible for changing the way the air war was fought at sea and offers excellent results. Outside of this role, they function as a standard high explosive shell on contact with surface vessels. They can be used as the primary instead of standard HE, but keep the ammo cost in mind. High Explosive Base Fuse are a high explosive shell with the fuse mounted at the base of the round. This gives a slight delay before detonation, sometimes allowing the shell to penetrate its best used against unprotected ships and destroyers. At extreme range, these shells can penetrate unprotected decks. Next we have semi-armor piercing rounds, which are often capped rounds with a delayed fuse that allows the shell to penetrate inside the ship before detonating. This round is the premier shell to use if you want to destroy crew compartments, bridges and magazines. Semi-armor piercing rounds usually have more TNT, but less pen than an AP round, and act like a high explosive shell if they fail to penetrate, making them excellent against smaller vessels too. They are an excellent, versatile shell that tends to dominate the destroyer and light cruiser meta. Lastly, we have dedicated AP rounds which are designed to crack the really tough nuts. These shells are the key to success in a battleship fight or if you wish to fight an opponent that is a class above your own vessels. They usually have less TNT mass than other rounds, so repeated hits or accuracy is required to really see success. Armor piercing rounds offer prospects of really exciting one shot, one kill. So in a nutshell, the shell type determines the effect and the shell caliber determines the capability and what is possible with the weapon. So let's explore gun sizes one by one. First up, we have small caliber auto cannons up to 30 millimeters. These are your rapid fire close quarters weapons and they're perfect for taking out fast moving targets like torpedo boats and aircraft, but most lack the punch to penetrate anything but the lightest of armor. Note that anything smaller than a 50 caliber is nigh on useless in a naval engagement. Usually it's fine to use just the standard belts. This gives them the most versatility and saves on silver lion costs. However, some weapons have dedicated AP belts and captains should consider using this when specifically fighting lighter warships such as frigates and sub chasers, and in some cases destroyers. The dedicated HE belts are really effective against wooden hulled ships and aircraft, being largely useless against armor. In this category, the best weapons prioritize rate of fire, range, and stability if they're mounted on a small vessel. The maximum effective range is about two and a half kilometers. 
Next we have the medium caliber auto cannons, 37mm, 40mm, 45mm and 57mm. These are your all rounders. They offer a balance between rate of fire and high damage output, making them versatile for various combat scenarios. They have an effective range of about 4km but it's dependent on the gun, giving them the ability to screen against coastal vessels and aircraft alike. These guns are found on vessels of all sizes and are usually the AA weapon of choice for the largest blue water ships, with some dedicated AA cruisers having over 40 mounts. When fitted to coastal vessels, they afford a potent offensive weapon able to outrange lighter armed vessels, though stability does become one of the biggest issues on light hulls. The mixed belt is often the best choice in all versions, but the AP belt offers a solid choice for doing serious damage to corvettes, frigates and destroyers. Some guns, 40mm and over, are able to detonate ammo stores, torpedo mines and ready racks at close range. High explosive belt can be used by larger warships to guarantee each shell is effective in the anti-aircraft role. Up next we have heavy auto cannons and light naval cannons. This category includes calibers such as the 76mm, the 100mm rapid fire auto cannons found on Cold War era ships, and older naval guns such as the traditional 3, 4 and 5 inch cannon. This is where things start to increase in complexity. The Cold War auto cannons, usually fitted to frigates, have accuracy aided by advanced systems and excellent rate of fire which offsets their smaller size. This lets them have comparable damage output to larger guns. In this caliber you will mainly find that high explosive or some variant of it to be the main choice, so high explosive tactics usually apply. This means harassment, stripping decks, setting fires and reacquiring new targets in the interim. Though able to fight out to 9km, they excel in the close to medium range starting at about 7km. If AP is an option and is available, then these should be used dependent on the individual shell's penetration characteristics as they can be brutally effective at dispatching crew modules on other frigates and destroyers. AA proxy shells at these calibers are insanely effective and in some cases better than the standard HE. The light naval cannons from 3, 4 and 5 inches are extremely diverse array of guns from many competing nations and guns in this category can fight to about 9 kilometers or out to 11 based on their size, but accuracy is often poor. The best guns have high velocity, high penetration and varied shell choices, and the best engagement range is still about 7 kilometers and closing. At this caliber, shell plunging fire becomes a viable tactic with slower shells able to dislodge a foe behind cover at range. This category would take all day to go through individually, but in a nutshell, this is where shell choice really starts to matter and it's best explained in the form of a hierarchy. Semi-armor piercing against anything with a light steel hull, frigates, destroyers and light cruisers. High explosive against anything else, with it being more effective against targets lighter than yourself. Semi-armor piercing shells act like high explosive if they don't penetrate, so they are my preferred choice in a destroyer engagement. The best shells have high TNT filler, with one kilo being the benchmark. Also, when looking at penetration, the best shells have decent penetration at 30 degree angles. The next best, if semi-armor piercing is not available, is a base fuse shell which is a high explosive shell with a slight amount of pen and a marginal fuse. It's best used against unarmored destroyers and smaller warships than yourself, better than HE in most cases. Finally, some guns at this caliber have a dedicated AP round, but this usually has a very small warhead. Unlike semi-armor piercing, there is a chance of overpen, where the fuse does not have enough to pass through to trigger the fuse. AP shells should only be used against the target you know to be thick enough to penetrate and trigger. Their long fuse time allows you to shoot bow on and rake the enemy ship, causing massive damage. As such, AP can be used to systematically destroy an opponent and requires the most knowledge to use. If these shells are showing little result, change your type or your target. 6 inch guns get their own category because they are the start of cruiser weaponry and the current meta. 
They have an excellent rate of fire. They have an excellent effective range of about 12 kilometers, which just so happens to be the starting engagement for most games. And they usually have enough penetration to fight their equal and opposite number and are able to batter heavier opponents into submission through sheer rounds per minute. Some destroyers have these guns and are considered upgun destroyers and are considered light cruiser hunters. The Z25 is one example of an upgun destroyer. With 6 inch guns you can basically use high explosive or semi armor piercing against everything at your class and lighter with armor piercing shells being used against anything that needs to be cracked like heavy cruisers and other well protected light cruisers. You can use 6 inch armor piercing shells against destroyers but you do run the risk of over penetration. Finally we have the larger caliber guns and these are your heavy hitters. They're designed to punch through the thickest armor and deal devastating damage. But on the flip side, they come with a much slower rate of fire. Shell choice and ship knowledge matter the most for this category, as the diversity of heavy cruisers, dreadnoughts and battleships offer vastly differing capabilities. This category runs from 8 inch guns all the way up to 14 inch guns, and it is defined by very slow reloads. 12 to 19 seconds being common for an 8 inch gun and even reloads up to 50 seconds for some of the largest 14 inch guns. Shell choice needs to be made when selecting the target or you will waste literal minutes doing ineffective fire. Honestly, Battleship Combat should probably use its own video, but to simplify this we will state that the AP shell is the meta for this category. Use it against everything your class and higher. Keep in mind that accuracy really matters and you need to be able to put those shells in the right spot. Everything smaller than you gets an SAP round. Some of the largest battleship shells have crazy amounts of TNT in their standard HE shell or semi armor piercing shell. So if this is the case, use them to lol sink cruisers and some dreadnoughts. In War Thunder at the combat ranges that you see, Usually, a gun will defeat its equal amount of armor, such as 8 inches versus 8 inches of armor. So keep that in mind when selecting your target, and also keep in mind that most ships aren't completely armored everywhere. Your shells will get through the lighter parts. Experimentation is often the key, and knowledge of a ship's weak spots and armor thicknesses play a huge role. And that's a wrap on our dive into War Thunder naval ammunition and gun types. The topic is so broad it is hard to condense into one video. The best way is to explore the individual vessel and analyze them. Chances are I have a video on a specific ship, so check out my channel if you have a vessel in mind. Remember, knowing your ammunition and gun is half the battle won. So equip your vessels wisely and rule the high seas. This is Commander Tyrael, signing off. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more strategic insights. Until next time, dismissed.